Hi, I'm Dr. Martin Rutherford, Certified Functional Medicine Practitioner and Chiropractor. Dr. Randall Gates, Board Certified Chiropractic Neurologist, also a chiropractor. So today we're going to talk about the microbiome and thyroid. And uh, I, so this is a, a subject that has been dear to our hearts for at least the eight years you've been here and before mm -hmm. then, you know, that was a, uh, a part of where it started to go. Uh, mm -hmm. Back in in my mentor's days, uh, Dr. Karazian, who I believe was the first person that really got how much thyroid affected everything. So anyway, the point is is that when we first started doing these videos years ago, a lot of people complained that we talked too much about the gut. So we're going to talk about the gut again today, <laughs> <laughs> and new data on the gut and the microbiome and how. It's so interesting now uh, from why do you talk about the gut and how stupid are you? How could the gut affect anything? And how could right. diet affect autoimmunity? And how could, it, how could eating a right diet ever help me? And, and we, were, we were doing this in those days. <laughs> and, and it was kind of interesting. Now it's kind of like people come in and educate me on the diet. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's kind of fun. So diet and thyroid. Thyroid is like the canary in the coal mine. The thyroid is connected to everything and everything seems to be connected to the, to the diet and, and the microbiome. And when people come in here for their thyroid, which people still do, we get a lot of people coming here for their thyroid, the first thing I have to try to help them to understand is it's not about your thyroid. <laughs> it's about everything else. And one of the big everything else is, is the microbiome that we were been talking about forever. Right. So, uh, so now we're going to talk a little bit more about the microbiome, mm -hmm. more nuances. Over the past couple of years, it's come out that the microbiome has a lot to do with uh, autoimmunity, mm -hmm. uh, uh, different types of autoimmunity, rheumatoid arthritis for sure, and probably diff other different types of, uh, of, of autoimmune diseases. So now we're going to talk about the micro microbiome and Hashimoto's. And Hashimoto's is largely our thyroid. We're going to talk about mm -hmm. thyroid. <laughs> but in our practice, the people who walk in here mostly have uh, Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune attack against the thyroid. So new data, I guess it maybe could have been called new data on the microbiome and the thyroid. And, uh, and, and this is data that, that is used in uh, evaluating cases and, and more importantly in helping to get them better. So uh, so the data that we share with you is real data that's real usable data. And so I hope you appreciate the, the research that goes into this. So, mm -hmm. Okay, so Mr. R&D. <laughs> so what's the new stuff on the microbiome? The new stuff is that it's now validated that Hashimoto's and hypothyroid patients basically have a shift in your microbiome towards less protective bacteria, if you want to say it that way, bacteria that are involved with maintaining the intestinal lining, maintaining that barrier. And so it's now been confirmed that Hashimoto's patients are, they have a paucity, they have a lack of those bacteria. And that's significant because it's, it relates to everything Dr. Rutherford's been talking about. And you know, how much of everything is Hashimoto's? How much of it really is your thyroid hormones? How much of it is gut bacteria? It really begs the question because we do this work and we work with people from, we really started with like a food allergy kind of perspective. And then it was not food allergy, it was really food immune reactivity, which is where you eat rice and you get an immunological reaction to rice. And maybe those immune cells to rice will attack your thyroid. That was the premise that we were working off of. And then we got into the gut bacteria and well, if you're eating rice, is it having any effect immunologically, but is it affecting the bacteria rather? Right. And so those are all the relationships you really have to consider when looking at the gut of a hypothyroid patient, Hashimoto's patient, so on and so forth. Now, because of this, you know, one of the bacteria that's been found to be deficient are bifidobacterium. So everybody out there now is going to tout bifidobacterium as the solution for hypothyroidism. Just wait, <laughs> give it like six months. We are a one a horse, uh, yeah. uh, you know, one horse, one, what, what is that? A one pony. One trick pony. One trick pony society. Yeah, we are. We are, <laughs> we are when it comes to, I, and then maybe I shouldn't say that to the people who are watching, but I'm about to do an interview today with a patient and, and that patient has <clears> been through <throat> everything, all the different one trick pony solutions for her problem and they failed 
And I kind of got a letter before I'm going to do the interview kind of saying, well, how are you different from these people? <laughs> I guess one of the things I want to say is we're not a, we're not a one trick pony. pony. This, is your, this is your probiotic for now it's got this bacteria in it. So it's right, gonna, which was found deficient. It's found deficient. Patients. And we've seen this before. We've seen it. That's why Dr. Gates says that. We've seen a lot. Yeah. We saw it with uh, celiac. Uh, oh, celiac in, in mm -hmm. Hashimoto's. Mm -hmm. I have celiac in Hashimoto's. That was kind of the first gut connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was kind mm -hmm. of the first gut connection, celiac. And if you got Hashimoto's, what, 60, 70% of the time? Mm, I think it was around 50%. 30, 50%. Basically, if you have uh, gluten antibodies, you have thyroid antibodies, 50, about 48% right. or something like that. But then we would see people come out. We started getting people off the gluten, and it was a miracle for some people. For some people. <laughs> <laughs> and some people got worse, and now we know why that was, and some people didn't feel anything. But uh, that then, then famous practitioners, when I say that, it's always somebody <clears> who's <throat> e like either on television or they've been on Dr. Oz or they've been on Oprah or whatever it is, came up with the miracle pill that you can eat gluten. You don't have to, oh, yeah. you don't have to, the one trick pony thing. And this is what Dr. Gates is talking about. Mm -hmm. the, the research will come out, they'll come out with a pill for that bacteria. Maybe it'll be a probiotic, maybe it'll be a natural antibiotic. And the next thing you know, you'll get a letter in the mail, buy this <laughs> and your Hashimoto's will get under control. Mm -hmm. And then they'll make $2 million and you'll have a, a empty bottle sitting on your shelf. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm, I'm into the practical aspects of, of, of this stuff. That's true. That's true. I mean, these things are complicated. They're vicious cycles. Um, yeah, and there's so many things going on. So as we've discussed in other broadcasts, just trying to loop it all together. You know, we started with gluten. What does gluten do? Well, gluten induces immune cells to the gluten molecule, the gluten peptides or whatever the immune system is attacking. Those immune cells seem to have a tendency to attack the thyroid. So we have that component. But then gluten also breaks down the gut in everybody. So Dr. Fasano showed that in 2015. So if you eat gluten, it causes leaky gut. Well, what is the significance of that? Well, now you have a shift in your bacteria towards an inflammatory state, a less protective state. So now are you absorbing pieces of bacteria which may cause an insulin resistant mechanism that's completely separate from Hashimoto's, but is fostered by thyroid disorders as well. So now your liver is more susceptible to becoming insulin resistant. Yeah. And now the bulk of your immune system starts sitting in your intestines because of all this dysfunction going on. You have a genetic weakness for Epstein-Barr and other intracellular vi viral infections. So your ability for your immune cells to clear viruses from these cells of your body sucks genetically. Now you add this on top of it, then you get stressed, your cortisol levels go up, you get imbalanced in your Th1 and your Th2 system, that's two sides of your immune system we've talked about before. And now you get Epstein-Barr living in your thyroid and three other viruses. This and is going to be what I'm going to talk to that lady about <laughs> this afternoon. And then your immune system attacks your thyroid and, you know, you're miserable, your hair is falling out, you're gaining weight, your thyroid numbers are normal, and you feel like crap. And everybody says, well, why? Well, this is why. Yeah, that's uh, the mechanism. And that's the, and that's the mechanism. Mm -hmm. And it's multiple mechanisms that are interrelated. And that's really the answer when people come to us and say, um, you know, how are you different or whatever. And, and it is not a sales pitch. It's that these are multiple vicious cycles. We were talking last night about, um, you know, there's a general level of confidence that you can have in this area. Uh, but I don't think, I don't think, I don't think the understanding rises to the, to the, to the level of that these are multiple vicious cycles and that you need to unravel these vicious cycles in a specific order so that you, you, you go after one or two vicious cycles and the rest of them kind of, kind of, follow because everything is interrelated this is what dr gates was was relaying to you at that point at, you know at this point in time so yes there's a you know there's a bacterial you know and it's this also goes to the, the bacterial shifts and you know they did uh, they they saw the bacteria in thin people were different mm -hmm, than the bacteria mm -hmm. in bigger people there was a there was a breakthrough article in the wall street journal on sunday on how they're showing that emotional trauma could actually cause people to get sick. <laughs> and so, I mean, and I said this in, in sarcasm because 
the, the functional neurology group, which is Dr. Gates is a board certified mm -hmm. functional neurologist, is known as forever. That they have techniques to work with this, but it's it it can't be brought out into the world about a bacteria being the problem uh, until it's been researched and until it's gotten into a research magazine because the things that Dr. Gates is sharing with you that are in the latest research magazine we've been working with for a long long time and so if it's so if you if, if you get if you get online you're not a, you're going to mainly be getting by this by this supplement mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you're, you're instead of this supplement is one this 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 piece of data is one piece of data in a, in a in in multiple vicious cycles that help us to understand the response to care or maybe understand if a response to care isn't such what it is now maybe you, you would go after that bacteria or something like that so i'm just saying that so that you don't go out and go oh let me look that up <laughs> and let me be the latest sucker to go buy the uh the the new natural antibiotic for the new bacteria out there that's going to heal Hashimoto's, it's probably not going to heal Hashimoto's, but it's definitely a part of the problem. And it definitely, for people who, who like myself, can f forget that how important my gut is mm -hmm. to everything else, to kind of just one more piece of data going, I have to be really careful about what I put in my gut. Otherwise, it's going to flare up my, my Hashimoto's and, and all these other different types of things. So the gut bacteria, I mean, to I me, that all goes back to the gut bacteria again and again and again. It does. It yeah. does. Yeah. You know, and that's where we're very imbalanced in our society. Why? We don't know. Is it the lack of parasites? Is it the food supply? Is it all the antibiotics we take? Hard to say, but the human microbiome is definitely shifting. Now, I mean, one can argue we're living longer. That's good, you know, because we're not dying. Uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or not, <laughs> but uh, but it is what it is, you know. And uh, some plastic people just sun. argue plastic sun. Yeah. <laughs> I learned last week that not a lot of people have seen The Graduate, which, yeah. which, which yeah. that's the that is the line that lasted for like ten years out of The Graduate. But we talked about plastics can cause it mm -hmm. last week, yeah, so I went and reviewed plastics. <laughs> but you know, some people argue that it. A lot of our improvements in health come from basically just hand washing. There's a lot of studies, and there have not been a lot of head-to-head -head comparisons and against that. And around the 1900s is when people started being more clean. So, uh, is and that bacteria. the reason why? Yeah, hard to say. Hard to say. Do people in the past just not live long enough to develop all these autoimmune diseases? Hard to say. But we're a very well-fed nation. Uh, that's one thing we can definitely comment on. We're a well-fed nation. We're, you mean we eat a lot? We eat a lot. Right. And we eat consistently. And because of that, that may be part of the reason why, too, our microbiome are shifting. Because all the animal studies are all about high-fat, high-carbohydrate diet, chow, as they term it, for the mice. And that's basically what we're eating. Yeah. You know, we get our pizza, we get our burgers, our fries, our Cokes. So, so that's diet the story. Diet matters. It's creating bad bacteria that can be related to Hashimoto's and they estimate there's about 10,000 ba bacteria, or, ba or different types of bacteria in your gut. So that may keep us in hangouts for a long time as they mm -hmm. study each one <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and their effect on the, mi the <coughs> microbiome's effect on whatever it is that they're going to study it on. So, yeah. so, uh, so that, I think that probably more than wraps it up. But okay. For any other questions, go to powerhealthtalk.com. We appreciate you watching, and we'll see you soon.